The squat might just be one of the worst hamstring exercises out there. By the end of this video, you'll know why and you'll know what to do instead to grow your hamstrings. Welcome on, folks. We back, soon to be Dr. Milo Wolf here with Wolf Coaching. Today, we're talking about the squat and why it really doesn't train your hamstrings very well. But before we do that, let's talk about some anatomy of the hamstrings. The hamstrings, colloquially referred to as the biceps of the leg, have four heads. Specifically, there is the semi-membranosus, the semi-tendinosus, and there's the long and short head of the biceps femoris. All four of those muscles are involved in knee flexion, like during a seated or lying leg curl. However, only three of those muscles are involved in hip extension, like during an RDL. The only muscle in the hamstrings that doesn't contribute towards hip extension is the biceps femoris short head. Now that we know that the hamstrings mostly act as a knee flexor and as a hip extensor, let's talk about the squat and how that plays into the squat exercise. During the squat exercise, Motion comes primarily from two joints and two joint functions on the way up. Number one is extension of the hips and number two is extension of the knees. Now, dear viewer, if you've been listening, you might say, well, the hamstring should be helping out with hip extension in that case. And you would technically be right, if not for one thing. If you were to use your hamstrings in the squat, you would also be flexing your knee. And that's the opposite of what we want to do. After all, without also extending the knee, you wouldn't be able to complete a squat successfully. If you're getting confused at this point, just know you're not alone. In fact, there was a man called Lombard back in the day who had this exact same confusion. And this resulted in something called Lombard's paradox. Lombard's paradox describes paradoxical human muscle contraction. For example, when you're getting up in the squat, both the quadriceps and the hamstrings are activated and contracted in spite being antagonists. How can this be? Surely when you're contracting the hamstrings, that then resists the quads, which should make standing up from a squat impossible. Well, that's the paradox. You can contract your hamstrings and your quads at the same time during the squat and still complete a rep successfully. But if that's the case, why don't we see hamstring growth from squats? Well, it likely has to do with the fact that if the hamstrings were to contract too forcefully, and really play a big role during the squat, they would strongly resist the quads. As I mentioned earlier, in the squat, there are two things you have to achieve, knee extension and hip extension. If we use the hamstrings to extend the hips, they will also be trying to flex the knee because the muscle always contracts at both joints or all joints that it inserts in. So if we use the hamstrings during the squat, we're making the job of the quads harder. The quads now no longer have to overcome just the force applied by the weight and the gravity, they also now have to overcome the force being produced by the hamstrings that is trying to get the knee to flex. And so the body doesn't actually use the hamstrings very much for hip extension. Instead, it looks to muscle groups that still do hip extension, but that don't have this action at the knee. They look for the adductors and the glutes. The adductors and the glutes don't do knee flexion. They don't resist the quads, but they do do hip extension. And so they can help you out during the squat without making the role of the quadriceps any harder. It's basically just like the path of least resistance. Your body is trying to use the muscle groups that will make the movement as easy as possible. So, because the body can use the glutes and the adductors instead of the hamstrings to perform hip extension, the hamstrings shouldn't get much stimulus or shouldn't grow much from the squat. But what does the evidence say about this? Well, I think there are two studies that illustrate this concept beautifully. We have a study by Kubo and colleagues on the squat, and we have a study by Plotkin and colleagues comparing the hip thrust to the squat. The study by Kubo and colleagues compared shallower squats to deeper squats. I actually discussed this study in the context of my glute video, so you can check that out. But that's not really what we're interested in here. What's interesting about this study is they actually measured growth of the quads, the glutes, the adductors, and the hamstrings. Let's focus on the deep squat condition here, as it is the most relevant to our discussion. What did they find? Well, when squatting deep, participants saw really robust growth of the quads, the glutes, and the adductors. However, when it came to the hamstrings, there was essentially no growth seen. So this study's findings definitely seem to reinforce my point about co-contraction and your body just trying to find a path of least resistance, essentially. What about the study by Plotkin and colleagues? In this study, they compared two groups. One group performed all of their training using squats and one group performed all of their training using hip thrusts. Again, they measured growth of the adductors, quads, hamstrings, and glutes. Again, similar to the Kubo study, Squatting grew the quads, adductors, and glutes pretty well. Equally, hip thrusts did a pretty good job of growing the glutes, not so much the adductors. What about the hamstrings? Well, neither group really saw much hamstring growth. So this actually suggests that neither the hip thrust nor the squat is very good 
at growing the hamstrings. So squats and potentially even hip thrusts seem pretty bad at growing the hamstrings. What should we do instead to grow those hamstrings? If you remember the anatomy I mentioned earlier in the video, you'll remember that the hamstrings have two functions. One is hip extension and the other is knee flexion. Importantly, you can't just get away with doing only hip extension work like a deadlift because one of the four heads of the hamstrings is only involved in knee flexion. So if all you did was deadlifts or RDLs, that one fourth of the hamstrings wouldn't really ever get any growth. So let's talk about these two categories. For hip extension work, you are best doing a variation that keeps your knees relatively extended. By keeping your knees relatively extended during the whole movement, you're able to lengthen the hamstrings fully. So in this category, things like good mornings or RDLs or stiff legged deadlifts do a really good job. Alternatively, if you're looking for a hip extension variation that more so trains the glutes or adductors, you may actually be better off doing a hip extension variation that allows the knees to bend a little bit, like a conventional deadlift versus an RDL that's performed more so for the hamstrings. The second category is knee flexion work. Ideally, for the hamstrings, you would perform seated leg curls for the same reasons as why you do a hip extension exercise with your knees relatively straight. Because by sitting down and flexing your hip, you're actually lengthening the hamstrings more. With that being said, you don't want to do just seated leg curls. Every now and then, maybe about 20% of the time within your program, it is probably worth doing some lying leg curl work as well. The reason for this is that while the hamstrings are super important, there are also other knee flexor muscle groups, like the gracilis and the sartorius muscle. Both of these also act as knee flexors, but they are actually also hip flexors, which means that during the seated leg curl, they are quite shortened. Whereas during the lying leg curl, when your hips are more extended, they are quite lengthened. Why is this important? And why have I in general made recommendations about training the hamstrings at long muscle lengths? Well, if you look at this video here, you'll see that there's been some recent research into longer muscle length training or training a muscle group when it's stretched, showing that actually that's quite beneficial for hypertrophy. So in general, pick exercises that lengthen the hamstrings well and load them heavily in that position. That's the video on hamstrings. If you like the video, please comment, like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, letting me know what else you want to see. And I'll see you guys, my viewers, in that next one. Peace. Only in... Fuck off, ambulance. People are making videos here while you're trying to save lives and shit, you feel me? Damn it.